Wheat got a surprise. Corn got a surprise. And beans had a generally uneventful USDA report day. The problem is the surprises in corn and wheat pulled prices in opposite directions. The cattle complex ended a tough week with some price gains, and hogs ended today mixed with strength in the nearby contracts. Live, I did not care for Citizen Kane. Via Farm Journal Studios, <laughs> this is Agritalk. This afternoon, we chat with Pro Farmer's own Brian Grady. I'm the handsome newsman Davis Michelson, and now the host of Agritalk, Chip Flory. Is that some sort of a statement that you're making right off the bat there? The perfect film? I think not. Oh, really? Yeah, I really? didn't care for it. No, no. I, it's sort I of thought that it was film, good. Film de noir kind of a thing, artsy yeah. fartsy. I felt like it right. was a, awfully, awfully indulgent, and I didn't get it. I don't even remember how it ended. Just, <laughs> uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Give me Beverly Hills uh, Cop any day of the week. <laughs> Porkies. Give me porkies. <laughs> yes. 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 The movies that tell us what matters <laughs> and how not to get fooled by the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We're Modern off and running. Fun. Welcome to Agri Talk, everybody. Friday, Friday, Friday. <laughs> I'm Chip. That is uh, movie critic Davis Hello. Michelson. Mm -hmm. and, Hello. Uh, Hello. I like it. I like it. I like how you're uh, starting things off here. What a day, man. A USDA report yeah. day. Uh, yeah. Sound the alarms because we get, we had a, I would call it a big, big, big surprise in the corn numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, wheat was a negative surprise. Beans kind of go nowhere but got pulled around uh, uh, by both the corn and the wheat markets today, favoring the downside in the soy complex. I think for the 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 big reason that uh, beans were pulled lower today is soybean oil traded to the downside again today. So uh, what a crazy set of numbers that we got. Uh, looking forward to breaking it all down with Brian Grady from Pro Farmer. Uh, and with that in mind, let's go ahead and get to some of these numbers. Okay, buddy? Well, sure thing. Well, wheat futures gave back everything that was gained yesterday. December soft red winter wheat futures fell to the lowest close since March 7th. And chart watchers are targeting support at the March 6 contract low of 565 and three quarters. Ongoing harvest hedge pressure and good growing conditions for the spring wheat crop had the wheat market lower on the week ahead of this morning's supply and demand update. In that update, USDA pushed old crop carryover to the expected 702 million bushels, but new crop wheat carryover was lifted 98 million bushels from last month to a larger than expected 856 million bushels, much of that increase based on the 133 million bushel increase in estimated 2024 production. USDA put the all-wheat crop at 2.008 billion bushels. Chip, that's about 100 million bushels larger than expected. December HRWD wheat futures today, 15 and one quarter cents lower at 586 and a half. December SRWD wheat down 19 and one quarter cents to 575 and three quarters December spring wheat closed at 597 and one half chip that's down 21 and one quarter cents yeah that was the September contract there in the spring wheat down uh, down 21 and a quarter led the way to the downside spring wheat crop estimate came in bigger than expected uh, we're, we're gonna get those we'll dig into those numbers a little bit with Brian that's where we're gonna start is with the wheat production report with Brian just simply because it the crop Crop size is 100 million bushels more. It's only 2 billion bushels. And the crop is 100 million bushels more than than what the trade was looking for. So we need to get to the bottom line on that. On the wheat, December soft red winter wheat futures down 37 and 3 quarter cents. December hard red winter down 29 and 1 half cents. And September spring wheat futures down 35 and 3 quarter cents on the week. Well, Chip, the corn market got a more bullish set of old and new crop balance sheet estimates than anyone expected, but the sharp losses in wheat yeah. futures limited buying in corn. USDA cut 145 million bushels from the old crop carryover, and new crop corn carryover at 2.097 billion bushels was more than 200 million bushels below the average pre-report trade guess. Man. Growing conditions across the bulk of the corn belt also limited buying interest. Hot temperatures are expected this week. But seasonal temperatures are expected to return to most intensive corn areas next week. 
December corn futures fell to a new contract low ahead of the USDA report and then recovered to close above yesterday's high. Corn was lower on the week, but today's upside key reversal is the first signal that downside momentum has been broken. September corn futures were one and three quarter cents higher, 402. December corn up four cents, 414 and three quarters. March corn futures closed at 428, up three and three quarter cents. A key upside reversal. Chip, yep. am I reading too much into this? Do not ignore it. Do right. not ignore it. Long term trending markets. Uh, when you get that key reversal, whether it's at the bottom or the top, mm. you got to pay attention to it. I think, especially in corn, there's some history there. September corn on the week was down eight and one half cents. December corn down nine and a quarter cents. Well, Chip, old crop soybean carryover was 10 million below trade expectations, and new crop carryover was about 15 million below trade expectations. Despite the price positive estimates, November bean futures opened slightly higher and then fell to spike support at yesterday's low, moving back up to close just below the opening range. Soybean oil lifted bean prices last week, but pulled bean prices lower this week. Eastern Corn Belt rains were a big time negative factor on the bean market this week. August beans 12 cents lower, 11.05. September beans down five and a quarter, 10.58 and one half. November beans closed at 10.65 and one quarter. Chip, that's down two and a half today. Yeah, you know, okay. The the parity of the declines in the soy complex this week struck me. Okay, get this. Mm -hmm. August beans down five and a quarter percent. November beans down 5.7%. Uh, August bean oil down 5.85%. August bean meal down 5.15%. That's wow. not how the, the soy complex has been trading recently. There's been a clear leader in either direction. And this week, everything moved in unison. On the yeah. week, August beans down 61 and a quarter cents. November beans down 64 and a half cents. August bean oil down 290 points. And August bean meal down $18 and 40 cents a ton. Old crop cotton carryover up 200,000 bales from last month. The new crop carry jumped 1.2 million bales from June. Those increases were built into futures, and that caused some choppy price action this week. December cotton today, 40 points higher, 71.27 chip on the week. Up 29 points. That was it. Yep. Let's go to the livestock's heavyweight choice graded box of beef prices were 51 cents higher this morning on good movement, and that helped cattle futures build on modest mid-morning gains. After a big sell-off at the start of the week, live cattle consolidated the second half of the week. August live cattle today, 12 and a half higher, but 182.37 and a half. October futures up 57 and one half cents to uh, 184.07 and a half. August feeder futures climbed back to the midpoint of this week's trading range, 250 higher on the day today, 258.60. And on the snout side, August lean hog futures opened higher and on session lows. And rallied to fill Wednesday's downside price gap. August hogs today a buck seventy seven and a half higher, eighty eight forty five. October up seventy five, seventy fifteen. Chip. Yeah, the problem is, is that those back month contracts, the December hogs, at sixty two thirty seven and a half, couldn't work higher today. That was a tough, tough day. Mm -hmm. On the week, August live cattle down four dollars and five cents. August feeder cattle down two eighty two and a half. July lean hogs on the week. Make that August lean hogs on the week. We're down 142 and a half. All right. Thank you, Davis. Uh, coming up next, we're going to get to the report details and try to get some perspective and figure out what it means for us going forward. Brian Grady, Pro Farmer Editor, next. On your favorite radio station or your preferred digital device, Agritalk is live every weekday. Davis, I had something wrong. You did? Yes. Well, tell me about it. Because, And I realized it as soon as I said the weekly change on the hogs. Because on, oh. my, on my spreadsheet, I've got it as July hogs, but I knew that I put the August hog close in there. Well, sure yeah. enough, if you go back and get the previous week's August close in there with this week's August close, August hogs are down just 72 and a half cents, not the 142 and a half okay. that I said. So, so roughly August half hogs, as much. Yeah, roughly, roughly half. half as much. August well, hogs on the week down 72 and a half cents. Don't beat yourself up about it because I think, and I was going so fast, I don't even know. It was a blur, but I think I said December instead of September. 
September, right on the spring wheat. So yeah. you know, that's okay. that's, I corrected it. It's a mark it's against both of us. I'm here for you. You're here for me. It's it. It all works out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why it, it works. all works out. We're good. Yeah, we're good. I feel good. All right, and you know, it's probably a good thing that we've got Pro Farmer editor Brian Grady <laughs> yeah. to keep both of us straight. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Brian, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm I'm great, Chip. Uh, so we're here at the end of the week, obviously, and uh, the USDA reports are out of the way, and and uh, so you know it wasn't wasn't as bad as feared, uh, especially for the corn market. Boy, I guess not. Now I do want to start with wheat, though. Let's get that production uh, uh, report out of the way, uh, because boy, oh boy, total production was quite a bit bigger than what the trade was anticipating there about a hundred million bushels more uh what what and how did that happen well um the winter wheat crop was bigger than what was anticipated but uh really the the spring wheat crop was the one that uh you know and this is the first estimate on that um but the uh, much bigger spring wheat crop than than what we thought uh, was out there. So USDA estimated at 578 million bushels, and and uh, uh, the trade was coming in coming in looking for 521, and so uh, those 57 million bushels uh, make a difference. But but like I said, the the uh, the winter wheat uh, estimate, uh, and we've had multiple months of that already. Um, mm-hmm. That came in uh, higher than expected by 25 million bushels as well, yeah. and and so um, you add it all up. Uh, the Durham uh, was bigger than expected. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a relatively small crop compared to everything else, but, uh, but still, uh, yeah, it it still came in, uh, yeah. you know, 14 million bushels uh, above expectations. Yeah, that's a huge number for Durham, um, and and something that all comes into play. Well, when everything is said and done here, of course, we got the 702 on the old crop wheat carryover because that's what the June quarterly grain stocks report told us it was going to be but when everything was said and done um the the wheat carryover jumping up uh from last month on the 2024-25 outlook that's <laughs> it kind of turns attitudes in that wheat doesn't it yeah, so 856 million bushels of, of projected ending stocks for the 24-25 marketing year. That would be the biggest since 1920, uh, 2019-2020. Um, um, so, you know, now now we're looking at uh, year-over-year build um, for consecutive years and, and wheat ending stocks. And, um, you know, in Russia and Black Sea region continue to dominate on the export side of things. And, and so um, not the best picture for the wheat market by any means. No, and for those of you that think that uh, Brian Grady just went all Joe Biden on us, he did not. It was <laughs> he said it very clearly, but it was still a little hard to follow. The highest wheat stocks estimate since the 2019 to 2020 marketing year is that right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 2019, right. 2020. Right. Right. Um, it. Uh, I, I don't know where we go from here on wheat. It, it, what about Ukraine and, and Russia? I, it, uh, Ukraine evidently has decided they're getting tired of Russia stealing wheat and selling it as their own, huh? Yeah, uh, probably not much of a surprise. I mean, so to keep this war going, um, mm-hmm. you know, they, they have we have to find ways, or not we, they have to find ways of, of uh, uh, doing some stuff. But they, they seized a cargo of, of looted uh, grain earlier this week that they said Russia stole from them. And, and so, um, and I don't know, I, I don't think that's a, a much of a big deal to be honest with you. The, okay. I, you know, the weather situation, that was an issue, um, all over the last month or so, but, uh, it looks like a lot of the, the crop estimates out of the black sea region undershot, uh, what the production yep. is and, and yep. the Russian yields are coming in better than anticipated. And, and so, um, I, I, I don't think that there's much left there from a, a bullish perspective either. Yeah. So when you take a look at that wheat chart right now, I, I, I've, I've been looking at the uh, DS SRW chart uh, quite a bit here. I just don't see a whole lot that's indicating that that market is getting ready to make any kind of a move to the upside. I mean, it felt pretty good yesterday, and then we took it all back today. 
Yeah. And, uh, technically it was a, a poor finish to the week. Um, you know, just, we had that kind of, a oh, I don't know. What was it about a 30 cent, uh, consolidation range that we'd traded yeah. in close below that. So it looks like we're probably headed back to the March lows at this point in time. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, let's go over to corn because boy, oh boy, when you take a look at the, even the old crop, um, uh, carry over, We've been wondering what in the heck's going to get us under 2 billion bushels on the old crop carryover. Well, all we had to do was add 75 million to the export number, add 75 million to the feed and residual, and here we sit now with a 1.877 billion bushel. I think that was a little surprising, though, based off the June quarterly grain stocks, wasn't it? Well, absolutely. The June one stocks yeah. came in 120 million bushels higher than than what the the average trade estimate was, and so you you would just assume that uh, those 120 million bushels would kind of be added to the bottom line, and, yeah. and you would see your carryover jump, uh, and instead uh, came in uh, well below expectations, uh, 172 million bushels below, as a matter of fact, and and so uh, that was it. it that was the surprise in the reports. Yeah. Uh, it, it, take out everything else. And, and uh, you know, there, there were some, you know, some surprises here and there. But that was the the number one surprise is the old crop ending stocks for corn dropping as much as they did when they were anticipated to, to rise. And, and so uh, we'll see. Uh, you mentioned under 2 billion bushels. That's psychologically important. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking at the uh, the closes here today and September ended up a, a penny and three quarters and, and December was up four cents. And, and so the market reaction wasn't great by any means, uh, but at least it relieves some of that psychological pressure. I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how the marketing year ends up. It, it's taken us all this time to get below 2 billion bushels. Um, yeah. You know, on, on the new crop uh, balance sheet, we're just under 2.1 billion bushels at the moment. Right. And, and so that was down 5 million bushels as well. And and so basically... Well, and the, it was 215 below the average trade guess going into it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, so the, the increase that we saw in the acreage numbers uh, at the yeah. end of June, in the June acreage report, that was pretty much absorbed by the lower beginning stocks and then some right. other adjustments. But uh, uh, so now you're looking at, at not nearly as daunting of, of uh, ending stocks number. Um, right. you know, we'll see where we go uh, from here on harvest today. Well, acreage. it brings weather uh, back into the equation, doesn't it? Absolutely. And and we've had some already. I, I think that mm -hmm. we probably lean down a little bit on the harvested acreage just because of some of the, the flooding and washouts yeah. and, and those yeah. types of things that we've had. Um, so you pull that down a little bit. Um, you know, whether we get to the 181, which is the trend line yield or not, uh, that that's where the weather comes into play. Um, but uh, yeah, it, if you start taking acres off, then your yield moves up. I mean, that's right. just, you can't, can't double dip. And, and that one's right. one that the market struggles with. And I mean, there's a lot of really smart people I know that struggle with that one. Yep. Uh, there, that's one that farmers struggle with that. Like if you start lopping off acres, the yield is probably going to rise because you're taking out the worst acres. What would be right. the worst yielding acres? So you, you exactly. can't have it both. I mean, that's, that's, right. that's that's the one thing. That's right. Don't worry. We talk about it all the time. I don't know if the message is getting through or not, but we definitely talk I, about I'm it. I'm pretty all the sure time. I'm pretty sure it's not because I, <laughs> I hear enough of it that it's just like Yep, I hear you. I hear you. Um we're I want to talk a little bit more about crop conditions when we come back, but chart wise, today was an important day. Upside key reversal in, in D scorn. Yeah, um, so we'll see. The funds are are heavily short in that market, near record short, and and so we'll see if it if this sparks anything. Uh, but you got to get follow through. Uh, and right, that, that's the key thing that's is you have to have some follow through early next week. Yep, that's exactly the point that I thought we need to make. I, I, it, right now, it, it's just kind of a oh, look at that. If we close above four twenty somehow, some way on Monday. Boy, heads up. Then you got to start to believe that maybe that upside key reversal is going to chase some of the, the shorts out of the market. Okay, when we come back, Brian, I do want to talk a little bit more about that 181 that USDA's got on the balance sheet for the national average corn yield. Is that going to happen? Where are the trouble spots? 
talking with Brian Grady, Pro Farmer, here on AgriTalk. Let's go to the markets page of profarmer.com and check today's closes where December hard red winter wheat futures were 15 and one quarter cents lower at 586 and a half. December soft red wheat down 19 and one quarter cents to 575 and three quarters. September corn futures one and three quarter cents higher at 402. December corn was up four cents to 414 and three quarters. August soybean futures 12 cents lower at 1105. November beans closed at 10.65 and a quarter. That's down two and a half cents. December cotton today was 40 points higher at 71.27. On your livestock, August August fat cattle today 12 and a half higher, 182.37 and a half. August feeders gained $2.50 to 258.60. And August lean hog futures a buck 77 and a half higher at 88.45. Get more market news every market day. Just visit tryprofarmer.com. Opinions expressed on AgriTalk do not necessarily reflect the views of Farm Journal Broadcasting, affiliate stations, or sponsors. When news breaks, the newsmakers talk about it on AgriTalk with Chip Flory. Welcome back. We are in the middle of a conversation with Pro Farmer Editor Brian Grady. Um, Brian, in in the last week, I've gotten several texts from me. Uh, different growers around the northern production areas uh one in particular down in southern minnesota I, you probably know who i'm talking about uh is, has said that this that corn for the middle of july looks as tough as he's seen it uh, in in his career uh because of how much yellow corn there is um i had a high school kid that uh, excuse me, I had a high school young man kind of yell at me on Twitter about how the, the crop doesn't look like worth a darn up in up in North Dakota. Um, and I'm just like, hey, I didn't say anything about it looking good. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. But I, I don't know. Is a 181 possible, Brian? Uh, well, the market thinks it is. And, and actually, uh, they're I would guess pricing in something above 181 at this point I, in time. I'm thinking Probably it is too. 183 or something, you know, yep. a little bit above trend line. So, uh, would if I had to just guess what what the market was uh, kind of thinking at the moment. Um, I, yeah, is it possible? Sure. Is it probable? Uh, I don't know if it's probable or not. Uh, uh, I'm. You know, I, I'll go back to the conversation we had before the break and and that's it if you start lopping off harvested acres which i think will take some off of harvested acres mm-hmm. so instead of the normal 92 percent maybe you end up with 91 and a half 91 percent something you know like that i i, I don't think below you go the 83.4 yeah i don't think you'll go much below that to be honest with you um okay. but uh, then you know, now, now you start creeping the yield up because you're taking out some of what would have been lower yielding acres. And, and so um, that's all part of the equation. And I think that that's the biggest thing is like we get so fixated with what the planted acres are. And really all the plantings are is a, a mechanism yeah. for getting the harvested acres. It's the that's harvested right. acres times your yield equals your production. It doesn't have anything to do with plantings other than that gives us a starting point. And, you know, some of those won't be harvested. Some will be harvested for silage. And that's why you, you don't harvest 100% of the acres. Um, and But it, it's harvested acres. That's, that's what right. we need to focus on. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Soybeans. Let's let's go over to beans. What are you thinking there? Was there any trends in, in the numbers that you saw today that that uh, have got you thinking? Well, ending stocks came down both for old crop and new crop, and and uh, but not not a lot. Five million bushels on the old crop, uh, twenty million bushels on the new crop, and and when I just look at the numbers, three forty five million bushels of, of ending stocks for the current marketing year and 435 for next marketing year um, we we have plentiful supplies of, of soybeans so um, not not as friendly by any means for soybeans as what it was for corn today um, but you, you know you're still sitting in the same type of situation the funds are 
very comfortable with a very hefty short position in soybeans. And, and so something has to change. Now, um, you know, we, CPC came out yesterday, the, the Climate Prediction Center, and, and said yeah. that it uh, doesn't look like La Nina is going to develop uh, during the summer time frame. Um, you know, maybe as we get into late summer, early fall type. But that forecast, if that pans out, means that the soybean crop is probably going to be okay. It isn't going to face yep. significant weather struggles. Yep. Uh, and so w- we need something to take some of those bushels off is, is the bottom line. Because when you look at 435 million bushels of projected carryover for the 24-25 marketing year, that is well, well above what would make the market nervous. Right, right. And the the usage categories on soybeans aren't like for corn. On corn, we can get a surprise out of a 75 million bushel increase in the feed and residual number. That can surprise us. On soybeans, we don't get a surprise in the crush number. Uh, the export number is rarely a surprise. And I know that we got one on corn with that 75 million bushel increase on the, the corn export number. But that kind of stuff just t- typically does not happen on soybeans. So... It, on on corn, we've we've got a potential attitude changer from the demand side. On beans, I think the attitude changer's got to come from the supply side, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and so that's where the weather comes into play as yep, we sit yep, here yep. for the next you know two months or so. Yep. And I I want to wrap up the the report conversation with this, and we you know we we can't forget that. Price has an influence on total demand. Uh, And with that in mind, I'm thinking that we've got to watch what might happen to this wheat balance sheet going forward because just looking at the 24-25 prices, okay, the 2024-25 prices, um, the the national average on-farm cash bean price is 11.10, down a dime from last month on corn. It's 430, down a dime from last month. And on wheat, it's 570, down 80 cents in one month, Beach. That's the biggest month to month change in price I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely huge. And, and, you know, just probably tells me more than anything that USDA was just overly optimistic in in terms of the the price outlook. But the Um, models. They use yeah. models, and, and it's yeah, spo- I, I, they're supposed to put in variables and have it kick out a number. There's no way that it should be off by 80 cents. No, no, no. And, uh, you know, this all goes back to 2022 when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, yep. and, and we yep. sent prices too high. I just had this conversation the other day, and, and you know, prices went way too high in a knee-jerk reaction to that. And now we're paying for it because yeah. – Everybody around the world produces wheat, and we harvested 11 out of the 12 months, and this is what happens in those types dude, of situations. Dude, as soon as you said, and now we're paying for it, you flashed me back to maybe it was a year ago when you said at some point we're going to have to pay for that. Well, here we are. Yeah. yeah we're, we're paying for it now. Absolutely. Yeah, no, you've and, said it a lot. You've said and it a it, lot. This will have a long tail. It, yep. Because it, it takes a lot of lot of production problems when everybody around the world produces a, a commodity, right? Such as right. wheat. Exactly. Okay. What are you thinking on cattle trade, dude? Um, I know we're backing off on that cash market a bit this week, but the box beef market this morning was up another fifty cents. I don't know if I want to call a top in in the cash or not. Oh, I you know I think what's going to happen is you'll see us back down uh, through the summer time frame, and and then we're probably going to make another rally. I don't know if we'll get back to the high that that was posted last week, uh, when all said and done. But I can't rule it out. Uh, I, I just think that, uh, you know, we did something very similar the last time we had uh, the run up in prices, uh, 2015 and 2014, 2015. Um, but uh, uh, we didn't quite get back to the, the high that time around. And, and I possibility that that happens again. Um, but uh, I, I 
I can't rule out another high uh, because of the supplies, but uh, I will say there are, you know, we're making up for some of the supply shortfall with increased in uh, feeder yeah. cattle imports coming across from both Canada and Mexico. Uh, right. So that that is somewhat alleviating it. Not not at all, all of it by any means, because, uh, um, you know, we we're just historically low levels uh, from a cattle supply standpoint. Yeah. So are you bullish or bearish cattle? Uh, I would Neither say is that, okay. Yeah, I, I would say I'm kind of neutral where we stand okay. at current prices. Um, it's hard to be bullish at, at the current price levels, I think. Uh, but my underlying attitude is bullish. I, I'm not bearish toward, toward the market, per se. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. What about hogs? Jeepers, criminy. Just a tough, tough yeah, market. Very tough. And, uh, you know, the, the underlying there is that we posted a seasonal high much earlier than what you we typically would. And now the market is just really struggling to find traction. And as we start to build slaughter supplies into the second half of the year, through the second half of the year. And, and so uh, I think it's going to be a struggle as we move forward, uh, probably through the winter months for the hog market. Uh, just isn't going to be a whole lot of upside there. Uh, but um downside should also somewhat be limited by the fact that we've been, just been in a free fall uh since may yeah. basically right right okay you like anything about cotton uh no no not <laughs> not at all <laughs> so ending stocks 5.3 million bales for 24 25 marketing years yes so uh you want to talk and Chinese uh, imports are projected to decline significantly uh, in the 24-25 marketing year. Brazil is exporting more onto the world market. It's just not a good look uh, for the U.S. at this at the moment. Now, uh, we added a lot of acres, and a lot of those came in Texas, and those are low-yielding acres uh, that have a high tendency to, even if, if they're harvested, they're low yielding. Sometimes not many are harvested depending on how the weather finishes up the growing season. And, and so we could chunk off some of that, but at 5.3 million bales of, of ending stocks, we need to chunk off a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. No doubt. All right, Beach, great job breaking it down. Um, if you were going to put call it real quick, if you're going to put calls on the markets for Sunday night, where where are you leaning? Uh, I'm going to say corn opens higher, and the key will be whether we can hold on to those initial gains or not. Okay. All right. Excellent. Good stuff, Brian. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you Monday. You betcha. All right. Ha, yep. Brian Grady, editor, pro farmer. Okay. Uh, hopefully, Davis was taking some notes and has some things that he wants to talk about. We'll do it next. I don't know what you're thinking. So call us at 855-4-TALK-AG and tell us what's on your mind. Welcome back to AgriTalk, everybody. Your pal, Davis Michelson, here on a report. Day with Chip Flory. Yeah, man. Chip, uh, we've discussed some of the report details with uh, the Brian Stein, Pro Farmer okay. Editor, yep. Brian Grady. Um, actually, I've got a few highlights from USDA's crop production report you <laughs> might have missed. Oh, boy. 96% of the nation's sorghum acreage was planted by June 36 percentage points ahead of last year, two points ahead of the five-year average. By June 30, 19% of the nation's sorghum acreage had reached the headed stage. Chip. One might say sorghum is headed in the right direction. Hmm? <laughs> Tobacco okay. yields are forecast to fall 12%, so smoke them if you got them while you can. <laughs> and finally, opinions of the economy are reflected in this month's Lemon Report. Lemon production estimates were raised 9% in this month's forecast. But, Chip, that's no excuse to walk around with a sour face. <laughs> Some highlights from the crop production report you might have missed. Beautiful. Yep. Good talk with Brian Grady. Uh, not as bad as expected, at least on the corn side, was the call from the beginning of the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's Brian said it was a big surprise. It was a big surprise. Mm -hmm. when, when that old crop carryover number came across, 
uh, that was one of the the numbers where you you see it and you think now I'm looking at something wrong. Uh, but when it came across at 1.877 billion bushels, and then the new crop comes across at 2.022 billion bushels when the expectations were 2.3, mm. you, you know it. Uh, the, the things add up pretty quick, and and we've been talking for so long that we got to find a way to get the old crop carry under two billion bushels before we can turn this yeah. market around. Yeah. Well, here we are now. I don't think it. it I I got to believe that most are very surprised that USDA added seventy five million to the export estimate on corn. Mm-hmm. And corn exports have been good. Have they been 75 million bushels better than – have they been 2.225 billion bushels good? I don't know. I don't know. And then on the feed and residual side, yeah, to get a 75 million bushel increase when we just got a quarterly grain stocks report that showed us June 1 stocks were 120 million bushels bigger than what the trade anticipated – and then we get this increase in the feed and residual right. uh, category. That was a that's a big surprise. That's a head scratcher, okay. um, and it it should have been a jolt. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean it should have been a jolt to the corn market, and it was a jolt to the corn market for a whole penny and three quarters up in the September contract, yeah. four cents up in the D's. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> um. We we continued our ongoing, I think this conversation may be one of our pillars of our career, the relationship between acreage, harvested acreage, and final yield. Um, I think I've kind of got my head around that, although, you know, it sort of moves counterintuitively a little bit. I feel like a no-brainer is if this corn yield goes up, let's say we manage a record corn yield, I feel like that's... That's got to be a weight on the market, right? A record? No. No? No. No. Uh, I'm confused again. We we get every now and then we're at a point that a record corn yield could actually be bullish for the market. In, in this case, Ooh. it would be. It okay. would be. Uh, and the reason that I say that is trend line yield is 181. That's what USDA has got in the supply and demand balance sheet. Is a is a one eighty one. You know what? I want to get that right in front of me right now before I go any further. Yeah, one eighty one bushels per acre. The harvested area is projected at eighty three point four bushels or eighty four. Geez, eighty three point four million. That doesn't have anything to do with with the production estimate. That has everything to do with the acreage estimate that we got on June twenty eighth. So. They, you get the the planted acreage estimate, and then you get the harvested acreage estimate in that acreage report. Acreage estimate came in it on harvested corn, eighty three point four. By the way, harvested acres on beans is eighty five point three. So more harvested bean acres than harvested corn acres. Uh, acres harvested for grain on corn. So here we are, eighty three point four at one eighty one. Gives us a crop of 15.1 billion bushels. The record corn yield was set last year at 177.3 bushels per acre. So if we have a record corn yield of 177.4, okay, Mm -hmm. but it's still a record. It's still a record, 177.4. That would give us a crop of about 14.8 billion bushels. You got to take 300 million bushels off of the supply side. And all of a sudden, your 2.1 billion bushel carry is 1.8 billion bushels carry. If you can keep, if you can keep total use at 14.905 billion bushels. So <laughs> it's not very often that you can say that a record yield would be bullish, but because of the expectations that are in the marketplace, a record corn yield would be bullish. That's really interesting. Wow, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about expectations. And right now we are building a case because of we've taken some some corn acres out of out of uh, 
out on some of the private expectations. Some of the lower yielding expect or acres have already been taken out, mm-hmm. so they're working with a number below eighty three point four million. Um, it's uh, we're we're in a situation where for the first time in a long time, this crop we could be setting up for it to be worse than expected, Oof. which would be a completely different narrative than what we've gone through over the past few years. It, it's mm-hmm. been better than expected. This one could be worse, All even right. if it's a record. It could be worse than expected. Uh, the National Weather Service six to ten day. Out- it's not updated. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> she, she gone. She gone. Yeah. We're going to be talking more with Brian Grady uh, next month when Pro Farmer heads out on crop tour, if I'm not mistaken. Huh? Absolutely, we will. Uh, That's fun. the third full, full week of August. Monday morning, we've got a conversation with Greg Peterson, Machine Repeat. Monday afternoon, we're going to talk markets with Rich Nelson from Allendale, Inc. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Agritalk.